Daedric artifacts are the most powerful objects that you can find in the world of the Elder Scrolls, created and maintained by the Daedric princes themselves. Although the actual ritual required to create such powerful items is unknown to us, we are at least aware of the process that is needed to create the more simple Daedric armor sets, and those can require either living souls offered or the immortal heart of a Daedric spirit. Suffice to say, only the gods themselves know the true sacrifice needed to even fuel one of these, let alone craft it. We're going to go through my top 5 most powerful Daedric artifacts in existence within the entirety of the Elder Scrolls universe. Not in terms of in-game power, but by their ability to change the world as we know it. Let's get it on. Number 5. The Skull of Corruption. The artifact of choice of Vermina, the patron of nightmares, psychological terror, torment, and evil omens. By far one of the most evil of Daedric princes, and with her, she carries an object of your most feared dreams. To the naked eye, the staff would simply feel like a weapon of destruction, a stave of pain that consumes dreams and unleashes death. But to some, it can be much more than that. The skull of corruption fits in the dreams of anyone within the general vicinity, not just a few feet, mind you, maybe even miles away. When used to steal dreams in this magnitude, it can be a slow, painful process, but one that can most definitely decimate even an entire army. The most impressive part, however, is the fact that it recharges by simply doing the harm that it is supposed to do in the first place. A well-hidden necromancer could theoretically find a spot below a major city and simply wait out a few months before all of the dreams of the inhabitants are consumed. A tactic that if used directly before a major battle would definitely turn the tides of combat, way more than any other offensively based Adric artifact like Dawnbreaker or Goldbrand. But that's not all, the Skull of Corruption has an extra ability that the Dragonborn never got to attune to. You see, Vermina grants her subjects the knowledge to manipulate people's dreams, in a way that allows them to extract physicality from these imaginary worlds. You can see this by the Potion Dream Stride which allows people to enter someone's dream and travel great distances within the dream, only to come out in the real world in the place where you left the dream at, allowing you to teleport from place to place. The Skull of Corruption, on the other hand, grants the wielder the ability to manifest someone's nightmares directly in front of them, forcing the target to confront their greatest fear, themselves. A confrontation that is more physical than illusory. The manifestation is actually real, as the staff allows the physical creation of someone's nightmare. This nightmare will fight the target to the death. A more fucked up torture measure will never be found by the staff created by the very patron of psychological terror. Number 4. The Ebony Blade. The Sword of Murderers. Not just any kind of murderer. The backstabbers, the betrayers, the slimes that deceive you. Those that pretend to be your friend only to take everything you own and have from the very hand you fed them from. See, the Ebony Blade provides the murderer the one thing they can never have. The smile of their target as you plunge the blade into their hearts. For the dark gift that this blade gives you is rather somber. Those struck by this blade will not recognize you as their murderer. They will see your face filled with their blood, your hands holding the weapon that slew them, and your murderer's smile as you content with their demise. Yet, they will not recognize you as the one who killed them. Till the very moment they pass away, they will defer to you for help. Their eyes will scream for you to find whoever did this and avenge them, and they will never even think of you as the one who did it, even though to every other passerby it is quite obvious. The blade will also mute the target that it strikes, to prevent their screams of pain from being heard. In fact, some even say the blade dulls the pain of death. A necessary mechanism to truly enjoy the kill, for what is truly wanted by the murderer is that last smile of trust and love that the person will give you before being killed by you. Clearly a blade only intended for the true dark of heart, for its power increases the more you kill those you love, a level that the Dragonborn never seemed to have reached, for the true power of the Ebony Blade was never reached within the events of Skyrim, since the blade lost much of its power because of lack of use within the centuries. Number 3 
Asura's Black Star. You see, the power of this artifact relies completely on the rarity and scarcity of Black Soul Gems. You see, these bad boys are rather unique, in that they are the only Soul Gem type that can actually entrap the human soul to use for magic. Extremely powerful magic. The power of the soul in the world of the Elder Scrolls is rather mundane, everyone uses it. All the enchanted weapons in the world have at some point consumed soul energy, though more than likely those souls were basic ones. The types of souls that you can find in a forest or in a field, uh, maybe a bear or a tiger. There's only so much that you can do with these souls though, they're not that very powerful. With grand souls, well, the world is your oyster. I mentioned before how you could create majestic, incredible things by utilizing the souls of Daedrus. Well, these souls can only be stored within a black soul gem. That just goes to show how powerful these grand souls can actually be if they can create living pieces of armor like the Daedric sets. Problem is, soul gems are created naturally in the world. Black Soul Gems are not. In fact, to create a Black Soul Gem, one has to go through a very rigorous ritual that can only be done every 8 days in a very specific temple, after praying to a very, very, very bad god. You see, the King of Worms, Manimarco, is the actual creator of the Soul Gems. He literally invented necromancy in the world of the Elder Scrolls. After praying to this god and, and leaving a massive Soul Gem, Manimarco will bless you with a Black Soul Gem so that you may then practice the necromancy that he desires. Asura's Black Star essentially says no to all of that nonsense and simply allows you to entrap any soul in the world for you to use as you desire. You could kill Daedrus to your heart's content, entrap their souls, and use them to power incredible items, and then continue on your lawful good destruction. Or you could become the greatest necromancer that the world has ever seen, rivaling that of Mani Marco himself. You can see evidence of this level of soul magic in the very real demise of the Dwemer. You see, one of the greatest factors that progressed the fall of this great underground empire was the fact that these guys found the very powerful Ethereum and ore that they used to create incredible legendary items. Many believe that Ethereum is actually ore infused with human souls, since when the Dragonborn mines random ores in the Black Reach, every once in a while they will obtain a Black Soul Gem, signifying that maybe there was more to this Ethereum than meets the eye. Number 2. The Spear of Bitter Mercy there isn't a single Daedric artifact as powerful as this one, since this spear has the ability to kill any living creature in the entire universe with a single touch. It is number two because of the extremely rigorous rituals that must be enacted for this to be effective. Rituals that have long been lost to time. You see, the Spear of Bitter Mercy is the weapon given to the Huntsman during what is called the Great Hunt, a ritualistic magical process believed to be created and refereed by Hearsign, although not even that much is factually known. During this ritual, the Huntsman follows a series of chantings and processions meant to empower himself and the Spear of Bitter Mercy. After doing such, the Huntsman becomes completely immune to any magical or physical attack made by the Hunted regardless of whether it is a mortal or immortal weapon, suggesting that not even the gods or Daedric princes can stop a hunt from being finished. This ritual of the hunt is what charges the spear with unlimited power, so much power that it is in fact the only thing that at this point can harm the invincible huntsman. This power is said to be able to hurt even extremely powerful Daedric Lords, the, not the superior Daedric Princes. It is very much possible that Daedric Lords, such as you know, Malakath, Hearsign, Meridia, or even Shogoreth, could be potentially killed by this spear, but not truly born Daedric High Lords like Meron Stegen or some of the more powerful ones. For the ritual of the hunt to be able to work, the hunted must have a reasonable way of escaping his demise, like the collection of six keys that will open a teleportation circle away from the hunting grounds. It's like a game. Now that's just one example of one of the many intricacies of the ritual that is needed in order for this to even work. And that's why this is only a number two, because it's very, very difficult to even start a great hunt in the first place. Now. That being said, if Hearsign were ever particularly interested in helping you, it could be very much possible that you could even kill a god. Number 1. By far my favorite Daedric artifact, Nocturnal's Skeleton Key. 
As you all might have already know, the Skeleton Key has the ability to open any lock found within the world of the Elder Scrolls. No door will ever stand between you and your treasure. But that is not all. This artifact could very well be the most powerful of all. What makes this artifact incredible is that it not just opens up physical barriers, but metaphysical ones as well. It literally unlocks your true potential, allowing you to succeed where others do not. Say that you wanted to throw a dagger into the sky and have that dagger hit a target a hundred feet away. If there was ever a chance of you succeeding in this endeavor, the skeleton key will make it so. If there's a version of you who could become the greatest knife thrower in the world and you seeked that destiny, you would find that destiny. This is the true power of the artifact, opening doors to your hidden potential. You see, Nocturnal's realm feeds lock upon all of the thieves on Nern. It does this by funneling her magics through a gate known as the Evenmere. This skeleton key is the key that opens and closes this Evenmere, a factor that both Nocturnal and her Nightingales control. Taking the key, however, forces these magics to funnel directly into you, literally obtaining all the lock in the world in your fingertips. With this key, no treasure is ever far enough from you, and if you wanted it, you could use this power to obtain any of the other incredibly powerful Daedric artifacts, making yourself unstoppable and unbeatable. So if you ever find yourself in need of conquering a few worlds, now you know which Daedric artifact to find first. Thank you so much for watching this video, and especially thank you patrons on Patreon for helping me fund this channel. Be sure to go there to help me out as much as you can, and if not, then simple, uh, a simple like and favorite will suffice. Thank you once again, guys, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.